Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. Today, as I promised yesterday, I'm going to give you a review of the webinar that we were able to watch today. I'm going to give you a few of the key takeaways. Um, I was able to ask them questions as well and I'll get to that as well. Um, and I wanted to give you a slight adjustment of the video I made yesterday, so I'm going to start with that. Yesterday I gave you this sheet and in this I told you about uh, how much the production of DGFC could increase if they use their available liquidity. So one slight adjustment that I would like to make to that is that okay in the webinar today it was considered that they have an available liquidity of 240 million so that's a little bit higher and a little bit higher than what they previously spent on acquisitions. Um, but I had this sentence however it is a loan so interest rate blah 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 blah. blah. 6% and I made a mistake here so in my thought process uh, I somehow let go of the fact that this is a production increase and I was thinking about the actual return on investment that the business could make that the acquisition could make so the actual return on the business could be around 33% 25 to 33% if we look at previous acquisitions but I wasn't talking about the return on the investment here I was talking about the increase in production and since the increase of production is top line so will affect revenue whatever the costs are for the bottom line if I make the assumption that there are no cost efficiencies they should stay the same so I shouldn't expect any negativity in that regard so that was my bad and I apologize for that but that means that the effective increase on business that we can expect from this available liquidity with these assumption is actually almost 16%. And then taking into account that the available liquidity is now 240, if they were to use all this liquidity for investments, for an acquisition, we could see a return of over 16%. So that obviously is very positive. And um, yeah, even better than what I mentioned yesterday. And if they somehow make this happen, then obviously we are very lucky as shareholders. Now on to the webinar. Webinar. My initial thoughts on this webinar, like it was pretty good. It was in uh, in Zoom, and um, I was happy to see that uh, you could open a chat and where you could ask the questions. And uh, the host, which was uh, from Yellowstone, is actually able to ask those questions to them. So I make sure to uh, write all my questions down and then ask them at the end. And um, yeah, I was fortunate enough that they were answering my questions at least four out of five so that's pretty good in my opinion and um, yeah what I enjoyed initially from the from the webinar is that okay so you could see them you could see the CEO the CFO and the investor relations and one person that I didn't get the announcement from it was pretty uh, small to what you could see because they were basically just in a um, in a room for meetings um, and they just talked about the uh, third quarter results what was particularly funny I'd say to me is that the CEO was obviously in his own comfort zone and he was just moving back and forth like on a rocking chair consistently while he was talking so <laughs> that was very enjoyable for me to see it's just good to see that they just do their own thing and not worry about what somebody else thinks at least I can appreciate that in uh, it in anyone and especially in a CEO I guess so let's start with a few of the actual key takeaways so I'm going to talk about the oak tree agreement which is something that I was particularly interested in because that's something that I had to understand a little bit better and I didn't get enough information beforehand and after that obviously I'm going to look at the acquisitions and what they're looking at and so on so let's start with the agreement so this is the sheet we saw and this is also the part where I asked the most questions about so my initial thought was, okay, how does this reversion promote? And if you don't recall this sheet, just pause it, uh, read it yourself, and then we'll start the video again so that you understand what I'm talking about. Um, the reversion promote, I didn't really understand how that would work. So I asked that question, like how does it work? And how long would it take to, um, to get the appreciation of that for TGFC? Because obviously to see a reversion promote, like, okay, how does it work? It's like. If this happens every year, it would be very lucrative, but it actually works a little bit differently. So I'm going to get to that right now. Um, the CFO explained this one and what this means. Okay. If they make an acquisition together, um, the required rate of return 
after the initial investment for oak tree is going to be 10 percent so the moment they exceed that they will get their reversion promote active so um bgoc will get that 15 percent interest or effectively about 9.5 percent or actually 7.5 percent my bad um then again how does it work so if oak tree makes an investment uh, they can expect like a return on the investment within let's say three years because that's what we have seen with the, the ebitda returns um then they would like to see that they are getting a return in the next few years that is about uh, at least 10 percent so the cfo went into depth into this one in his explanation but the key takeaway for me from this is that the reversion promote is going to get active activated i might say between five to seven years so the fact that they said that it was like okay yeah we're gonna meet that internal rate of return so at some point we are gonna have that reversion promote and then you have to take into account okay what kind of assets is DGOC investing in in long-term low decline assets that have an expected life of about 50 plus years still so to get after five to seven year get your extra stake that you didn't have to invest in but you do get the benefits from it after uh, five to seven years is pretty good and then you can benefit from it like 45 years so that was very interesting to me and um, something that often came back and something that is a sign of this as well is that um, DGOC is looking at the long term like there was an uh, investor that asked questions about the current gas price and the outlook and then the CEO replied that yeah it's looking pretty good right now but I'm not worried about uh, the next few months or the next year like I'm I'm looking at the next two, three years, like I'm a long-term part of this and I'm also not my own shareholder, so I'm expected, like he went on on about that. And um, this is actually a part of that as well. So the reversion promote is gonna take time, it's gonna take five to seven years, but DGC will benefit from it. So this is a very good sign for long-term investors. So all in all, I really like this. Um, the CEO added to that, that the acquisition, as we mentioned before, has to be at least $250 million. What does that mean? Under $250 million, they can acquire whatever they want, did you see? If it goes above $250 million, they have to talk to Oak Tree Capital and talk to them about, okay, we are looking at this right now. Um, are you interested? And at least give them the opportunity to invest alongside diversified and gas and oil. So that makes a lot of sense, right? That you include your partner in this case. But what I like about that is that, okay, if they have potential acquisitions, Oak Tree Capital will know about it before that. So before they actually release the fact that they are going to acquire something that they're interested. So that won't be in the books. That won't be in the news until or in the announcement until it actually happens. That means that we could see share price appreciation even before we hit news. That is something to keep in mind. And that is... Um, something that I like to think about as well because yeah sure we're long-term investors and we are individual investors but let's face it we do not have all the knowledge out there and we will never obtain the kind of knowledge that all these big institutional investors will get through the, all their connections and stuff like that so yeah to be aware of that and the fact that they have actually mentioned something along these lines is just positive and I like the honesty that the, the honesty that um, the whole management team has showed today so that was pretty good. Um, on to the acquisitions. Um, they haven't made any new acquisitions, but they did shed some light on, okay, what are we looking for when acquiring new companies? So I'm just gonna show this sheet in particular about this. Um, I'll get to this in a bit, because um, what they mentioned is they are looking for not just upstream assets, but uh, also the midstream asset, because midstream assets which I have to look for a bit like ordering and transportation. So this part, yeah, the, the moment they acquire more, and you will see that those costs will decline because they don't have to pay for that anymore. And they can actually get a revenue bonus from that, uh, which you won't see in the costs, obviously, but that will actually help the bottom line of TGC as well. Besides that, uh, an investor asked the question, okay, now that you have the ability to acquire bigger assets because you have the assistance of um, uh, Oak Tree, are you looking for investments outside of the Appalachian Basin? 
which is something with this is the area they're investing in right now and then the CEO literally said yes maybe yes that's that's how he said it so yes they're looking further than where they're operating in now and the CFO added to that that okay yeah we are looking at that but you have to look at how DGC started so three years ago when they went public they were producing three percent of what they are producing now they have acquired all these different assets and they were able to use these acquisitions and actually get them in line with each other and optimize the costs and get them producing very efficiently. And that's what they emphasized throughout this presentation as well, their efficiency and their cost reduction. So they are looking for assets outside of their scope right now or their comfort zone maybe, but they are confident enough that they will acquire these assets and then use the assets to uh, reduce the cost, optimize their revenue, the production, and so on. So all in all, that's looking very, very good. Then, just because um, there were some highlights, I'm just gonna give you guys a summary and um, we'll get to some stuff I haven't covered and some stuff that I did cover. But um, yeah, I think these, these are basically my key takeaways from this webinar. So the first one is the reversion promote. It's gonna take five to seven years to take it effective, but after that, it will be permanent. So they will actually hold on to those uh, returns. So that's pretty good in my opinion. If you think about that, you get returns for stuff you didn't pay for. Well, oof, it's pretty decent. And I understand that you have to wait five to seven years for that. And I'm not entirely sure whether it's going to be permanent if they hit that internal rate of return of 10% um, or just permanent after that because they have hit the internal rate of return already. But regardless, with what I've seen from DGC so far, I think because of the high rate of return, I think it, we can consider it to be semi-permanent. The second one is the acquisition funding. It's div dividend accretive. So what do I mean with this? Okay, so yes, the acquisition funding is going to go the same way they have been acquiring stuff so far. So partially equity, partially uh, debt, and now partially, potentially, Oak Tree Capital. However, that means share dilution, and as shareholders, we don't like share dilution. In general, you shouldn't like it. So if you ever wonder, uh, Robin, do you like share dilution? No, I don't like it. It's never good for a shareholder. If you look at it from a, okay, can we use any other type of funding? So what we have seen over the past ye few years is that they have used equity consistently, but the amount of equity used compared to the other options that they have has been reduced. So what did they say about this? Well, what we make sure for any acquisition is that it's dividend accretive. So yes, we use equity and yeah, we're going to use other stuff, but we make sure that any acquisition actually helps the bottom line for current shareholders. So even if there's share dilution, if there's an acquisition, we can expect an increase, not a decrease. So that's just giving me a, a lot of comfort. And even though I'm not a dividend investor, for me, this means the free cash flow will be increased. So all in all very positive and reassuring. And I've mentioned this before, like I have confidence in this management team. So I do expect that they um, would do this wisely, but to hear the confirmation in a webinar is pretty convenient. So third one, acquisitions further than the Appalachia Basin. I mentioned this before and I, th I think it's going to be interesting to see what they're looking at and what they're going to acquire and in what way that will complement their current operations because sure you can acquire something and maybe you could reach another market where you can pay a or receive a higher premium on your gas price and so on so all in all it's looking very interesting and I'm really curious what DGC is going to bring in the next three to 12 months. So they're not just focusing on upstream assets, so production, production, production. No, they're also focusing on midstream assets that complement their current business. So they want to use their own midstream assets. They want to use these assets to actually move their own gas. However, um, they have, that will reduce the cost, but because it also improves revenue because other companies will have to use these assets to move their gas, that, both of that, so reduce of cost and the increase of revenue because other parties will use that, that will improve the margin. So I like that they are looking at other options, just not just production to increase the revenue, but also, okay, how can we reduce costs and maybe a little bit of revenue. 
Something else they mentioned, and I haven't mentioned this before, is that they have noticed that US institutional investors are interested in the business model and they explained, well, we're talking about an industry that has been destroying capital overall for the past decade while they were promising that they were going to return value to shareholders. And um, right now we have a business model that actually returns value to shareholders. So we have uh, the next few years, they mentioned they were going to have a lot of talks with US institutional investors that are interested in their business model. And that makes a lot of sense. Obviously, I mentioned before how much I like this business model in this type of environment or industry and industry, I should say. So looking very good. And why do I like the fact that they are looking or that US institutional investors are looking at it? Well, more demand in share price means a potential increase in share price. And while I do not care that much about the share price of this particular business, it is nice to see a return on your investment sooner rather than later. Something else, the sixth reason is, uh, or the sixth point is wells are declining, but new ones operational. So we have seen that the legacy assets have been steady in production for the past seven to seven quarters, I believe it was, or nine quarters, maybe even. And uh, people think, well, the wells are not declining. And they specified this, so I like the honesty, well, the wells are declining, but we are constantly looking at new wells to operate in the same field. Um, we're just making them operational. So they're not drilling, but old ones that have been stopped, they just get them operational again. And that is what keeps the production steady. So wells are still declining, but they're looking to optimize their production in different ways. And lastly, there was a person who asked about the gas prices and um, how this would affect potential acquisitions. Uh, because yeah, the gas price has been coming up from like 170 to over three dollars in the past nine months, and um, people right now think that the gas price is high. And I think for us investors, it is pretty decently and pretty high because well, we see a high share price and um, or a high gas price, and it's higher than what they have hedged in on. So that's looking pretty good as well. But what did they mention? Obviously, the, the CEO mentioned, well, I'm not looking at the next few quarters. I'm looking at the next few years. And if I didn't do that, I wouldn't be doing my job for you as shareholders or for myself as a shareholder. He mentioned that, so that was good to hear. But what else he, he said? I think there were several questions about gas prices. And then he went a bit like, well, not laughing, but he was a bit joyful about it. Well, we're talking, we're thinking that current gas prices are high. But if you look at it, gas, current gas prices are pretty darn low. That's the way he said it. And he mentioned that between 250 and 350 they expect to be able to still acquire assets at a very lucrative price so all in all this is my summary of it and it was looking very good and i'm very glad that i was able to participate in this webinar so that's it for the gig today guys hope you enjoyed it if you did please leave a like and if you haven't already please subscribe to the channel if you have any questions about the webinar or about dgc in general leave them down in the comments below and uh, yeah let me know what you guys think of this uh, if you have watched the webinar i would like to know what you think about it and uh, yeah i wish you guys uh, a nice evening and uh, hope to see you tomorrow as always please keep in mind that i am not a financial advisor the content on this channel and on my website is intended for educational and entertainment purposes only